Hey guys, it's your girl Sarah. Welcome to Shady Sundays, the series on YouTube that tackles all things Eminem. Now, my first two Shady Sunday videos were a, a little on the negative side, you know, with Eminem's arrest in 2000 and everything. So today, I'm going to shift gears a little bit and focus more on the thing that made him what he is today. The thing we love Eminem the most for, the music. That's right, you read the title, you know what you're in for. Today, we're going to be doing a little lyrical analysis of Eminem's song, River, featuring the ever-so-awesome British red-headed guitar man, Ed Sheeran. This song is actually one of my favorite songs off Eminem's album, Revival. And it is the one song off this particular album that I personally love to analyze. That is exactly why we are going to be doing this today. If you haven't seen the music video for the song yet, I will put a link to that in the description below. It is really good. I promise you will not be disappointed. Full disclosure here, in the music video, the female lead character is named Suzanne or Sue, and she is married to a guy named Trevor. Even though the name Sue is said a couple of times in the actual song, it doesn't actually specify if she is married or not. And the song doesn't actually call Sue's significant other out by name. So for this video, I'm going to be referencing the characters by their names and relationship status as told in the video. You'll see what I mean later on. I may also divulge some details that were presented in the video, but not specifically in the song as part of, the, of this analysis as well. Also, just a reminder here, these are only theories, some of which I actually found on Genius.com. I'll also put a link to that in the description below. And also my personal opinion about this. I actually don't know the actual intent of the song or if this was actually based on true events. Eminem himself has actually never talked about the true story about the song or whether or not this was inspired by real life events. I just wanted to get it out there. Now that we got that out of the way, let's get started. I've been a liar, been a thief, been a lover, been a cheat. All my sins need holy water, feel it washing over me, a little one. Eminem or Ed Sheeran maybe who is actually the one singing the chorus but whatever let's just assume it's Eminem's perspective okay so in the chorus of the song he is illustrating his desire to wash away his sins with holy water basically he has lied cheated and stole as for the love part maybe he fell for the wrong person and that was a personal sin by opening himself up to someone only for it to fall apart and break him emotionally He's starting to feel the impact of his actions or sins have cost to him and the people around him washing over him. I don't want to admit to something if all it's going to cause is pain. It's hard to admit his flaws and sins out of fear of the pain and conflict it may cause. I mean, we all have felt that sort of inner fear at some point in our lives. That's part of being human. Truth in my lies right now we're falling like the rain so let the river run I think Eminem is trying to point out how the reality and truth of the lies he has told are now being exposed to the fullest extent or falling like the rain so let the river run He's coming home with his neck scratch to catch black sweat jackets and dress slacks mismatched on his breast jackets a sex addict So Trevor Sue's husband is an alcoholic serial cheater. The mismatched clothing the lyrics are referring to illustrates the likeliness that he was sleeping around with other women and that he was in a hurry to leave the location of his latest tryst and head back home to Sue. To catch flack means he probably knows his wife is going to be upset at him for his infidelity. Uh, yeah, no shit. What person would be happy to know that their significant other has been lying and sleeping around with other people behind their back? No one that I know of. Side note, when Eminem is rapping these lines, you can hear a woman screaming and shattering glass in the background. This could suggest that Sue is also a victim of domestic violence at the hands of her husband. With that in mind, Trevor sounds kind of like a dick. Actually, worse than a dick. He's a mega douchebag, cheating, fucktard, woman meeting super dick. Sue wants to get back at Trevor for being an abusive, cheating, scum of the earth dickbag. Okay, so that's understandable. And how does she plan to do that? By calling the cops or trying to seedly extract herself from that marriage to hopefully get a divorce and restraining order against him in the end? Nope. Sue 
wants to give that cheating, beating fucktard a taste of his own medicine by cheating on him too. Basically, what she wants to do is fight fire with fire. Listen, I'm not saying that cheating or domestic abuse is okay in any way. It's not. But cheating on your significant other because they cheated on you never ends well. It does not work out well for anyone involved. Trust me, if you fight fire with fire, you just get burned. Truth. It's a chess match. She's on his back with a jetpack. She's kept track of all his internet chess. So Eminem is comparing Sue and Trevor's marriage to a game of chess, which is actually really interesting if you think about it. In chess, the goal is to get your opponent's king piece in a position where it cannot escape giving you the opportunity to capture it and therefore checkmate that king piece. An important tactic to achieve a checkmate is to always be on top of your opponent by thinking moves ahead. Likewise, Sue has been collecting evidence of her husband's infidelity from his internet chats, which could only mean he finds his hookups and mistresses online. I mean, I can only imagine where he finds these other women. Tinder, adult friend finder, Snapchat, Craigslist, maybe Ashley Madison. Too soon? Anyway, she also seems to be putting him on the spot by confronting him with all the evidence that she has of what he has done. I wonder if he denied it or not. I mean, we may never know. And like any good chess player, she's preparing for her next move to exact revenge on him by cheating on him with none other than the rap god himself, Eminem. And guess it just happens to be moving on to the next Actually just shit on my last chick And she has what my ex lacks Okay, so shit on my last chick For lack of a better term Basically means he dumped his last girlfriend Which, assuming the events described in this song actually happened Could either be his ex-wife and the mother of his children Kim Scott or Mariah Carey Also, according to him, Sue has what his ex lacks Obviously, this line means exactly what it says. Sue has attributes and qualities that his ex, whoever she may be, does not. I mean, I wonder what that means. Again, we may never know. Cause she loves danger, psychopath. And you don't fuck with no man's girl, even I know that. But she's the by some plan to stab him in the back. Knife in hand says the relationship's hanging by a strand. So she's been on the web lately. Says maybe she'll be my Gwen Stacy, the Spider-Man. Okay, so anyone who is an Eminem fan knows that he loves comic books. So it's no surprise he would put a Spider-Man reference in the song, or, or any song for that matter. This is the same rapper who, in one song, rhymed Rap God with Krypton. But this reference to Gwen Stacy, who is the first love interest to Peter Parker, a.k.a. Spider-Man, in the comic book series, isn't just for the sake of referencing the character. There is actually some background to it. First, Eminem raps that Sue tells him that her marriage to Trevor is hanging by a strand. That could likely be a subtle reference to a story arc in The Amazing Spider-Man numbers 121 and 122, where the Green Goblin abducts Gwen and throws her off a tower and, in an effort to save his beloved Gwen Stacy, Peter Parker as Spider-Man, shoots a strand of spiderweb that attaches to her, which causes an accidental whiplash and unintentionally kills her. I mean, damn, that, that's dark. <laughs> Setting aside the Spider-Man references, Webb could also relate back to the earlier bars about Trevor's internet chats, suggesting Sue could be using the same medium to cheat on Trevor as he did on her, and that's how she and Eminem first got into contact. I mean, Eminem did admit in an interview last year that he was on Tinder. So assuming that the story is true, that he could be where he met Sue. They could have matched on Tinder. I wonder what Eminem's profile will look like. Hmm. And I know she's using me to try to play him. I don't care. I should say him, but I should have said I should say him after the first night, but tonight I am. So Eminem is basically saying he knows Sue is using him. That same sentiment was used in the music video where Sue told him that she wanted to be with him whether Trevor was in the picture or not, to which Eminem snapped back by saying, why, because I'm Eminem? So that reveals a lot about Eminem's vulnerable side when it comes to love and relationships. He's skeptical about whether or not she truly does care for him, 
in that way. He's not sure whether or not she truly does like him and care for him, or if she is only with him to get back at Trevor, or as portrayed in the video, because he's a celebrity. Yet regardless of that fear, he continues the affair in order to fill some type of romantic void in his heart. Aww, that's actually kind of sweet. Even Slim Shady needs love. Mm -hmm. Anyway, this illustrates the insecurities and fears Eminem seems to have in his life, which to be honest, is normal for most people when it comes to love, especially if you have been burned before. And Eminem has been burned by love in the past. We've seen that happen. Okay, fast forward some time later, I'm guessing, and Eminem is suggesting that, to him, this affair with Sue was supposed to be nothing more than a sexual relationship that has turned into something more, and now he wants out. When by Felicia becomes by Suzanne. <laughs> Found out. Now she feels deserted and used because he left. So what he did at first to her too. So Trevor finds out about his wife's affair with Eminem and leaves her as a result, at which Sue feels deserted and used. Even though the initial reason for her cheating on Trevor in the first place was to get back at him for cheating on her. I mean, I can understand the hurt of finding out about your significant other's affair. I get it. But it's still pretty fucked up that he left her for cheating on him with one guy when he was cheating on her with Lord knows how many women long before she did anything with Eminem. And let's not forget that he was abusive towards his wife, but still, it does hurt. You plan your entire life with this person only for it to fall apart. It has to be tough for anyone to go through. How am I supposed to tell this girl that we're through? It's hard to find the words I'm aloof, nervous, and soon to point that's too hurt, but what you deserve is the truth. As Trevor leaves the picture, Eminem starts to lose interest and wants to break off the relationship with Sue, but doesn't know how to break the bad news to her. He knows it's going to hurt her considering her husband literally just abandoned her, but he knows that she does deserve to know the truth. I mean, that's nice. He's being considerate of her feelings instead of just dropping her like nothing. At this point, say what you want about him knowingly sleeping with a married woman. At least he understands and is being considerate of the emotional pain she's experiencing. So, how does he handle this very complicated dilemma? Don't take it personal, I just can't say this in person to you. So I revert to the studio like coal in the wall diners. Don't have to be reserved in a booth. That's right, to avoid confronting the pain he would cause to Sue, he instead seems to ghost her and reverts to the studio as opposed to seeing Sue and telling her the truth. The studio and the recording booth is his safe place where he doesn't have to be reserved. There, he could let it all out and use his music as a way to express his emotions and feelings to whatever is going on in that moment as he doesn't have to hold anything back. And that is great for everybody. It gives him a place to express what he's feeling through music, and it gives us great music like this to listen to on a daily basis. So, it's a win-win for all of us. I just feel like the person who I'm turning into irreversible. I prayed on you like a church at the pew. Eminem doesn't like the kind of person this relationship has made him, yet he also feels as though he can't go back and change into what he was before. This goes into how our experiences and the people we meet and interact with could also change us either for better or for worse and how those experiences often leave a permanent mark on us that leave us feeling like we are different people than who we once were. Eminem admits to his own desires and sins and turns to the church for guidance. It, it, it suggests that he prayed for forgiveness for these sins and desires. Look, as an atheist, I don't personally buy this praying for forgiveness or committing sin, but Eminem is a Christian, so I, so I will respect that for this video. According to Christian belief, a simple prayer takes place asking for forgiveness, and then it's how you live out your life afterwards that really shows how bad you feel about your mistakes. He cleverly uses the word pray, as in P-R-E-Y, and pray, as in P-R-A-Y, to create a homophone. He preyed on her like an animal stalks their food, or I pray on a whole pizza. But he also prayed like this. 
And so he prayed to have God forgive him for his sins. Eminem praying in a church is a simile and a pun. Leave it to Eminem to be the undisputed master of rap similes and puns. But now that I got you, I don't want you. Took advantage of my thirst to pursue. Why do I do this hurt that I do? Get on my soapbox and preach my sermon and speech. At this point in his life, he's thinking only of himself. He's not literally praying to God. His sermon and speech is equivalent to convincing her to get an abortion for the sake of his own convenience. This is actually replicated in the video where Sue tells him she's pregnant. He does not react well to this, telling her he does not want to have a kid with her, to which she calls him selfish, for choosing himself over another fucking life. This is the quote that she said in the video. Hmm. That particular scene in the video ends with Eminem saying, we're not keeping this baby. Ouch. <laughs> that could either mean adoption or abortion, but in all likeliness, he probably meant abortion. It's hurt and bleach is burning in the womb. To start with her in the womb, we can't bring her in this world to the new. The king of wordplay is added again by connecting detergent and bleach. These products are great tools to get the rough stains off your white clothes, but he is not rapping about laundry. Nope. Interestingly enough, detergent and bleach are also one of the many household items that women consume to perform self-induced abortions. The full line, though, is detergent and bleach is burning the wound. Since if you put those products on an open wound, the wound gets worse and it burns like a bitch. Trust me, I know. <laughs> so that could be what is happening. There was an open wound in Sue's heart that was caused by being beaten and hurt by her husband. Eminem had filled that wound by possibly providing her with the love and the kindness that she did not receive from Trevor. She got pregnant by Eminem and Eminem just pour detergent and bleach on her already open wound, making it worse and making it burn. That is depressing. <laughs> Do you protect him for forbidden to your forbidden fruit? Another Christian reference. Yay, more Christian references. Okay, so forbidden fruit derives from the story of Adam and Eve, as God told them not to eat the apple of knowledge. Eve did so anyways, which caused God to strip him of eternal life, and we all know how the story goes. It's worth a Google search. In this scenario, Eminem uses forbidden fruit to describe the decision he made in the relationship with Sue that led to her pregnancy and abortion. He didn't use a condom, and as is the obvious result of a man fucking a woman without putting on a condom, he impregnated her because she was married when she and Eminem first got together, the whole forbidden nature of the relationship is intensified due to this act of infidelity on Sue's part. As Adam and Eve are stripped of their immortality as a result of Eve betraying God and biting into the forbidden apple, the unborn child in this situation is stripped of possibly being born in a related manner due to a similar act of betrayal. Yikes. Always the bridesmaid, never the bride. Hey. Always the bridesmaid, never the bride. Usually this term is used to refer to single women, <laughs> but it seems to illustrate Eminem's string of failed relationships and how it seems his relationships always seem to end, such as this relationship with Sue in the song and his marriage to Kim in real life. More wordplay! Yay! Eminem uses this metaphor to convey the chaos that always seems to occur in his life one way or the other. The meaning of enclave also functions well here as the seat was an enclave could refer to the seat of a Buick enclave car. He could also be wondering if his own actions in the relationship had a huge factor in what happened in the end. He seems to be taking some responsibility for, for his part in the destruction of his relationship with Sue, her marriage to Trevor, and her decision to have an abortion, which possibly resulted in her death. Using more wordplay to tie into the previous line, Eminem states that having another child 
to add to the three daughters he already has with Kim, one who might I add is still underage. I actually looked that up. She's about 16, 17 years old right now. Would have changed his life for the worse. M suggests that the love triangle, aka the relationship involving him, Sue, and Trevor, turned into a love rectangle, which, unlike a triangle, has four sides instead of three. But who could be the fourth? The unborn baby is most likely the fourth person involved since Sue is or was pregnant. What else can I say? It was fun for a while. That I really would have loved your smile. Didn't really wanna love boy, but fuck it. What's one more lie to tell an unborn child? So there are two ways to interpret this one. One, all of the statements here are bullshit, meaning his relationship with Sue wasn't fun, which I highly doubt. He wasn't really thinking about what could have been the smile of the aborted fetus if it were actually born. And he did want to abort this baby. Or two, there is just one lie. The relationship was fun and that he would have loved the child's smile if it were actually born. And although he really did want Sue to have an abortion, just not in the way she did that led to her death. It could also be interpreted as she got a back alley abortion and died as a result. This is the scenario I'm actually gonna go with. I mean, let's break down some facts. Eminem lives full time in Detroit, Michigan. We all know that. So assuming this story is true, the events took place there. According to Gunmatcher Institute, in 2014, an estimated 89% of Michigan counties had zero clinics that provided abortions, and 40% of Michigan women actually lived in those counties. As of the beginning of 2018, Michigan has implemented multiple restrictions on abortion. These restrictions include that a woman must receive state-directed counseling, that includes information designed to discourage her from having an abortion, which of course could be false, obviously, and then wait 24 hours before the procedure is actually provided, and the use of telemedicine to administer abortion medication, which is what a majority of women need to receive a safe abortion. That is actually prohibited. Federal and state law also forbids the use of federal funds for an abortion in the state of Michigan. That means, based on these restrictions, Sue could have easily ate detergent and bleached, or, as in the case with many women across the U.S. right now, as a result of these ridiculous restrictions, stuck a wire hanger up her vagina and died while trying to self-induce an abortion. This may seem a little far-fetched, but I actually saw an article recently about this song on a pro-life website calling it an anthem for the pro-life movement. Look, I have no idea what Eminem's opinion on abortion really is. He did say in a song earlier in his career, um, I don't give a fuck. That's one of my favorites. Something about supporting abortion. I don't know anything. But still, he has never talked specifically about whether or not he supports a woman's right to choose. I do know that there isn't really much to this song to identify it as a pro-life anthem. This is more a cautionary tale of love, betrayal, and death by self-inflicted abortion that could have easily been prevented if they were affordable, if there were affordable and accessible resources for women to obtain it. Anyways, thanks so much for watching. If you like this video and want more Shady Sundays, please give this video a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell because I make new videos every single Sunday. I'll see you all next week. And remember, be smart, be kind, and be cool. Mwah. Bye. <laughs>